We have a coronal hole that's going to be sending us some fast wind and likely with it another solar storm. And a new region rotates into Earth view off the sun's east limb. Will this bring good news to emergency responders to Hurricane Michael? Those stories and more in the shorty this week. Space weather this week sure is taking a while to settle down. It all started with this finger-like coronal hole that bumped us up to storm conditions when it sent some fast solar wind our way, and that was like five days ago or so now. Since then, we've been dealing with this kind of mixed up area here that's not really a coronal hole, but it's not really not a coronal hole. It's been sending us some kind of pockets of fast wind with some jumbled up fields, mostly just disturbed stuff, but the problem with that is that it's kept us at active conditions and bumped us down to unsettled and then back even up to storm conditions once. Right now we're back to unsettled conditions and slowly things are kind of tapering off, but unfortunately it's going to get quiet right in time for this next coronal hole to rotate into the Earth strike zone and once again send us some more fast wind that will likely bump us up to at least active conditions. This coronal hole is not going to be getting us quite to the levels that the previous one did, so we're not expecting storming to last for very long. Things should quiet down a lot faster, but it does cause issues for emergency responders to Hurricane Michael. Uh, the one good thing we've got, though, is that if you notice, there is a bright region rotating into the Earth view off the sun's east limb. This region is going to be numbered region 2724 if it continues to grow. And the nice thing is that it's actually bumped uh, radio propagation back up into the marginal range. We are back into the 70s for solar flux right now, and it looks like if it continues to grow just a little bit, we should stay in the marginal range for radio propagation and shortwave propagation easily over the next couple days and possibly over the next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are finally calming down from that previous solar storm we had just a couple days ago, but things aren't completely over yet because we are anticipating the more fast wind from that new coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here around the 14th. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with about a 40% chance of a major storm, and there's a lot of uncertainty here because the Earth shield is already pretty rattled, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly how intense this storm is going to be. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we have about a 10% chance of a minor storm, and these conditions should last over the next day or two and then settle down, and we should quiet down a little bit faster than we did from the previous solar storm, and hopefully after that, things will really get quiet. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. That is solar minimum after all, so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and this should make GPS users quite happy. Now, we do have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk. In fact, one of them might be labeled 2724 uh, by NOAA within the next day or so, and it, they are both boosting the solar flux. We are back into the 70s, which means marginal radio propagation again for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, especially to Hurricane Michael. You guys should enjoy these conditions easily over the next few days, possibly over this entire week before this region begins to dim too much. Now also because we are in solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than it would normally be. So you frequent flyers, and this includes the air crew who fly over 800 hours annually at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are also in in the marginal range now for radi radiation dose, and this includes prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is kind of settling down, but it's not quite quiet. And on top of that, we're going to have another burst of fast wind that will bump us up easily to active conditions, if not storm conditions, here starting around the 14th. So aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you should get a good show. And aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, you might catch a few glimpses as well, so keep your batteries charged. Now, for emergency responders, shortwave and amateur radio uh, responders to Hurricane Michael, 
well, these storms that we're having right now in this unsettled conditions, it might make the bands a bit noisy, especially on Earth's night side, but it shouldn't be too, too bad. You'll have a little bit of glitches around the 14th and 15th. That's probably when things are going to get the worst. But after that, things should settle down quite a bit for you. And the good news is we have that bright region that's rotating into Earth view off of the sun's east limb, and that should boost propagation, especially on Earth's day side, so that you can enjoy marginal radio propagation conditions again easily over the next few days, which is so critical right now, especially after the devastation of Hurricane Michael. And as far as you GPS users are concerned, things look pretty good for you. Even at low latitudes, the GPS looks like it's going to be pretty stable because we're just kind of sitting at unsettled conditions, which really helps kind of stabilize that upper atmosphere for you. So as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, your reception should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.